my life, man, my whole life, everybody around me was boxing. I come from a fighting family. The Mayweather family included a father and an uncle who were both fighters. The younger one, Roger Mayweather, was the most successful, winning titles in two weeks. And the boos you hear in the arena greet the entrance of the man whom Mexicans see as the Mexican assassin, a man who's built much of his career by knocking off Mexican fighters, Roger Mayweather. Roger had even fought a young Pernell Whitaker before Pernell was a champion, eventually losing whilst taking Pernell the full distance. His father, Floyd Mayweather Sr. was a respected fighter and had once fought the young Sugar Ray Leonard early on in Ray's career. Before going on to greatness, Ray Leonard won the match after the two battled it out in a grueling 10 round fight. But for Floyd Sr., his career was tragically cut short after a family shooting at the Mayweather home. Floyd's father was shot in the leg by his mother's brother when Floyd was just one years old. And at the time, his father was holding him in his arms, trying to discourage the shooter from fatally aiming at the chest. It was really a roller coaster ride, you know. Um, people kind of know uh, the background of Floyd Mayweather. You know, I stayed in Jersey, I lived with my mother. And, you know, seven of us lived in a one bedroom. You know, at one particular time, uh, my mother was on drugs. Um, my dad had been shot by my mother, brother. Sometimes I would stay with my grandmother. Of course, she was cleaning up offices and cleaning up hotel rooms. And my dad, of course, you know, he hustled, you know, in the, in the inner city. Eventually, you know, I moved back to Grand Rapids, Michigan with my father. Um, you know, I asked my mother, can she move back also? And she eventually moved back to Grand Rapids, Michigan. And um, I was happy when she moved back, but she was back on drugs. You know, I see my dad. Um, sell my mother drugs, you know, just those are things that I went through in life. Not only was it a tough life, but it was also tough love. You know, my father, any, anything, my father would beat me for anything I'd done. I don't care if it was. I may not even done it. My dad uh, was real, real hard on me, real hard on me. Uh, I couldn't make no mistakes. You know, if I make a mistake, you know, my dad, you know, kind of, you know, cuss me out, slap me, check me. And it was that tough love that translated into a tough training regime. People say, if they treat him like he was in the boot camp, you know what? They gave him the day. Believe it or not, I started training my son when he was a baby, right in the crib. I took his hands and started doing that. Pretty soon, my son started doing that on his own. I couldn't believe it. I used to just go to the gym and just, you know, stand on the chair and hit the speed bag. And, you know, after hitting the speed bag for a few years, I got good at it. So when I was four years old, I know how to hit the speed bag like a, like a professional. Floyd's father began to coach his son day in and day out, and the youngster fell in love with the sport. As an amateur, Floyd accumulated an 84-6 and six record, and he won three National Golden Glove tournaments along the way. At just 10 years old, he was described as being able to do what 19-year-olds could do. It felt good, but it was very hard. I was struggling, you know, struggling to fight. First, I want to thank the good man upstairs for giving me this opportunity to win the, the national championship. And second, second of all, I want to thank my father. He's the best in the Midwest, I must confess, for all the rest is no contest. But the Mayweather world would be turned upside down as Floyd's father was convicted to five years on a drug charge. I thought about my son a whole lot. I had to become a man at a young age, at 16. At 16, I had to provide for myself. I had to make a way for myself. When my dad went to prison, when I was 16, Don Hale brought me in and treated me like I was a son. When Big Floyd, Floyd's dad, went to prison, he sent little Floyd out to be with Roger in Las Vegas. After about two weeks, Roger couldn't handle it. And uh, he sent him back to Grand Rapids. He was living with his grandmother, running the streets, wasn't in the boxing gym. So I got with Floyd, uh, he called me the following week. The next day, Floyd was actually staying at our house and uh, ended up living with us. And I started taking him to the boxing gym. 
And uh, it was my, I, I was not a trainer, didn't claim to be, still don't claim to be, but I got floored in shape. And he went to the National Golden Gloves uh, in March. That was in January. In March, he wins the National Golden Gloves, got uh, biter of the tournament. And uh, uh, I started working with Floyd. The thing about Floyd is he was so focused on boxing at that point. He knew what he wanted to do and he was gonna do whatever it took to do it. And whenever he would go into the ring, he wanted to make sure that he was in the best shape that he could possibly be in. Uh, he had a competitive spirit about him that was different than any other fighter I ever worked with. He was easier to get to train than any other fighter I ever worked with. Uh, with Floyd, I can remember being in the gym with him and Carlos Navarro was the number one ranked 119 pounder. And I'd say, well, Navarro went 12 today. Well, I'm going 13. Uh, he was very, very focused that way. Floyd wanted the best of everything. Uh, whenever the new Jordan shoes came out, we'd have to wait till midnight so he could get them. When Don Hale brought me in, it motivated me to want to buy a house like that, to want to put my mother in a big house. And it was around this time that Floyd got real evidence that he could be great after sparring with older boxing pros that Don Hale managed. And as a teenager, he got the better of them. This one I knew I was on a, 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 on, on a, I can handle the pros because I was beating every pro. At 17, I was beating every pro in my gym. So I, I was boxing Frankie Randall before he fought Chavez. He's the first guy to ever beat Julio Cesar Chavez. I took it easy on him. Even though I knew I could have got the best of him, but I never wanted to, I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to, give him my best because I didn't want to lose my friendship with him. They see me, I, I box, so that's when they said, we want to box for Neil when you come back the next day. As Whitaker clowns a little bit for the crowd. This is what the Pernell Whitaker was the defensive genius who had also schooled the great Julio Cesar Chavez. You know, it was good work for both of us, that's all I say. See, by the time I was 17, I had already, 18, I already been around the world. In 1996, Floyd Mayweather competed as a featherweight in the Atlanta Olympics. This was Floyd's chance to perform for a global audience and if he could win it, he could guarantee himself a flying start to his pro career. Floyd steamrolled through the first round winning by an impressive 10 to 1 margin. The second round was also a landslide and Mayweather scored 16 to just 3 from his opponent. In the quarterfinals, he became the first American in 20 years to defeat a Cuban. He won by just one point to advance to the next round. And all seemed well in the semi-finals as Mayweather boxed brilliantly against the Bulgarian Todorov. But all of a sudden, his Olympic dreams met an unfortunate end when the judges didn't announce Mayweather as the winner. The robbery was so bad that even the shocked referee had preeminently raised Mayweather's hand. They need to get rid of the whole system and get a new establishment to control amateur box. We all know I got ripped up, you know, I gotta live with it, you know. I'm just gonna, you know, take my bronze medal, you know, and go home, you know. You know, it's time for me to turn professional, you know. I can't deal with this amateur boxing anymore. If anybody with one eye and 90 years old can tell me that Floyd Mayweather didn't score at least 40 blows in those three rounds, Floyd Mayweather won that bout. May 2nd, he should have a gold medal hanging in his corner, but he didn't get her today. I think that, you know, I don't really want to say I won a bronze medal. I think it's best to say I received a bronze medal because you can't win a bronze if you lost. And with that, Floyd vowed to never again taste defeat. A few months after receiving his bronze medal, Floyd turned pro in October of 96 and got off to a wonderful start against Roberto Apodaca. Making his professional debut, introducing pretty boy Floyd Mayweather. Clean it all the time. Good luck to both of you. Just love. Mayweather showed great power, destroying his fellow debutant in two rounds with punishing blows to the body. Oh, 
pulls up. Bang. Took a left hook, Rapidaka. And he hits him with a right. And Rapidaka, just a matter of time. You were able to work the body exceptionally well uh, during the course of this bout. Um, yes, because, you know, Mexicans are known for taking good head shots, so you know, I had to go to the body tonight. First of all, I'd like to, you know, thank God for this opportunity to come out here and don't do what I had to do tonight. And um, I'd also like to thank my dad um, and my Uncle Jeff and Roger, you know, for being behind me and helping me while my dad's gone right now. Going very well, but there's like a little more things you can do, but as you get to be fighting more often, it's going to come to him naturally. The Olympic robbery had also robbed Mayweather of the money a gold medalist could earn, which would cause problems later. Young Mayweather is getting $7,500 for this, his third professional fight. Promoter Bob Arum told me that the difference between the bronze that he won and the gold that De La Hoya won is that De La Hoya was already making $50,000 at this young stage of his career. But for now, it was time to focus on the fighting, and that he did. For our tougher pros, tougher fighters in the amateurs, and Cooper is. And referee Mitch Halpern on this fight. Big left by Mayweather. Mayweather racked up 13 knockouts in 17 straight wins, and he was doing it in style too, giving us an early taste of the personality he would become famous for. This one's scheduled for oh. six. Down goes Giefert. And Mayweather comes back with rights and Giefert will go down and... That's it! Giefert is hurt. And a couple of left, one of them to the body and a short left hand landed inside. He is doing some damage right now. Left hook lands, Leha stunned again. And he can stop at any time. By now, Mayweather's father had gotten out of prison and rejoined the team. The corner of Floyd Mayweather, his dad. Floyd Sr. came back right in time. After only two years of fighting, Mayweather got his title shot. I just want to thank Todd Rank, Bob Aaron, and Todd DeBuff, you know, for giving me this opportunity to fight for the world title um, October 30th against Janeiro Hernandez. Um, a lot of guys out there want to say uh, that I don't deserve a title, but um, I'm not ducking and dodging nobody at the 130 pound weight class. I'm willing to fight everybody and all comers. Um, I just feel I'm going to get a victory. I can't predict which way and how I'm going to do it, but I can feel, I do feel that I'm going to get a victory against Janeiro Hernandez. But I feel it's going to be a good, tough fight. He's a very tough guy and a gained opponent. It wasn't too long ago that the champion Gennaro Hernandez had been his idol in the past. Because when I used to lay in the bed, like I said, I, I, it was so crazy. I used to lay in the bed at night. And I got, my room got posters all around. I got posters all around my, my bedroom of all fighters. The, the fighter that I had right above me was Gennaro Hernandez. And I used to watch him fight. I used to watch him fight at the forum. I used to be like, he unbelievable. I said, no fighter would never beat him. But that was exactly what Mayweather was aiming to do. Hernandez had been fighting for 12 years longer than Mayweather and had never been beaten at 130 pounds. Hernandez had grit and intelligence and he had beaten the division's best. And if Mayweather was to beat him, it would require Floyd to be at his best. Floyd was the first Olympian from the 96 games to fight for a title. Obey my commands. I want a good clean fight. Right from the start of the fight, Mayweather grabbed the opportunity with both fists. But as you get close, it, it disappears. Now, hard right hand by Floyd. Another went down. You could see Hernandez's lead foot. His... So far, young Mayweather is simply beating Hernandez to the punch. No one in the division had even come close to this type of performance against Hernandez. One of the rising training talents. So far, the rounds have not been close. Mayweather is winning them all in the view of most of us. That's why I say he's the best natural fighter around because that's what you want to do. Make him exercise that side of his body that he doesn't train. And 
Hernandez has backed up against the ropes, just as Floyd told us he would, and Floyd going to work. Hand lands for Hernandez, Floyd comes back with a one, two, three, four, five, six. Six punch combination. And this guy is hitting him. And that's when it's the corner's job to show that right in the pattern. That's right. And Rudy is going to turn to referee Jay Nadian. After eight rounds of brutality, Hernandez's corner waved the white flag and the tears of joy flowed from Floyd. A proper show of respect for a great champion who was beaten by a younger, better fighter tonight. Gennaro Hernandez congratulates the new champ. What did you see in him that told you that somebody with his few professional fights could do this to you as an experienced veteran champion. I try to give him my best, but you know, he's just too quick, you know. Yeah. You know Thanks, man. A true champion. Long, You're a true champion. I appreciate it. And you'll be a champion for a long time. Be the best, you got to beat the best. They said Hernandez was the best. I fought him, I was victorious. Okay. Now they say Angel Man Freddy's the best. No, I'm fighting, I'm fighting him, and you know, with God on my side, I'll be victorious the second time. So it was on to the next, and Mayweather defended his title against the highly rated Angel Man Freddy, scoring an impressive second round stoppage. Right over the top, stuns Man Freddy. And he's not confused at all. He's just boxing, he's keeping Man Freddy out in the air so he can see Man Freddy. Man Freddy in trouble as Mayweather pounds away. Man Freddy almost went down. He won't take a knee, but he isn't throwing back. Mayweather pounding, pounding. I use body in my shots. And that's why um, Janelle Hernandez quit. I mean, people say, why did Hernandez quit? It don't look like Mayweather punch hard. If you're not in there, you wouldn't know. In just three years of pro fighting, Mayweather worked his way up to number two ranked fighter in the world, an astonishing feat considering the time frame. However, despite his high ranking, this didn't exactly translate into big paydays, and this led to tensions with the televising company HBO and his promotional company Top Rank. It was promotional stablemate Oscar De La Hoya who was getting the big bucks. De La Hoya was receiving around 10 to 15 million dollars a fight, whilst Mayweather had just been offered a 12 and a half million contract for seven fights. Mayweather infamously labelled the contract offer as slave wages, but HBO's executives and promoter Bob Arum disagreed. They felt that Mayweather had an inflated perception of his value. George Floyd Mayweather Jr. believes, as do many of the rest of us in the sport, that he has Oscar De La Hoya kind of talent, Roy Jones Jr. kind of talent. But as a result, he's already saying openly that he wants Oscar De La Hoya kind of money, Roy Jones Jr. kind of money. <laughs> this guy is a package. and We not, may not realize it right now, but we better jump on board. Although you said earlier, <laughs> jump on the train, there's a lot of people already on board. This guy's got the package. He's going to go down if he continuously stay in good shape as one of the best fighters of all time. He may as well start asking for the big money now. As the story goes, HBO executive Lou DiBella offered a solution. They could walk down Times Square together, and if Floyd was mobbed by fans, HBO would heighten their offers. They never did take action on this solution. However, it highlights Floyd's struggle for fame. And to add to his contractual issues, it was discovered that Mayweather had been getting robbed of his ring earnings. You gotta have, you gotta have the right people around you. Mm -hmm. and Certain people around me was, you know, making me sign contracts that I shouldn't have been signing. Had me in a position with a, um, an accountant that was stealing from me. Mm. So what happened? So what I did was I brought somebody else in, um, James Prince. He was a good businessman. He got a, a, a good business head on his shoulder. So I brought him in to look over everything. And they said, I've been getting beat the whole time. Wow. It seemed that Floyd's biggest problems were not inside the ring, but outside of it. Years from now, I want people to um, look down the line and say, um, Floyd Mayweather, he was an exciting fighter, a great champion. He fought the best, and uh, he was willing to fight anybody. Around the turn of the millennia, Mayweather was desperate to fight the other champions, but there was just one problem. He was struggling to get big names in the ring with him. Mayweather 
Mather says his ambition is to unify all the titles from 130 pounds to 147 pounds, four of them, individually. And surely somebody is going to show up during that time. But right now there really are no Felix Trinidad's looming and lurking out there to make a big fight with him. And after taking a long layoff, the boxing critics were falling out of infatuation with the young champion, and he lost his top two position in the pound for pound rankings. Boy, meanwhile, in the seven months since you fought, seven months ago, on my list, you were second pound to pound for pound, for pound to Roy Jones. Now, on my list, you're five, Ring Magazine, five or six in USA Today. Corrales is ahead of you. How do you feel about that? I want to ask you a question. How many fights have you had? I mean, because you, you seem to know a lot about so many different fights. If I want to know how many fights you had, you know so much about but, the, Floyd, the sport of boxing. But, 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 but Floyd, we're not talking about me. Now, you can't expect people to keep you number two when these guys are having super fights. Do you feel you need your super fights now? Well, when it's all said and done, you know, after Floyd Mayweather beat, beat Diego Corrales, after I beat um, Prince Nassim because he's ducking and dodging me, after I beat Joel Castamayor, after I beat Freitas, after I beat Paul Spatafora, any champion out there that wants to fight Floyd Mayweather, I'm not ducking and dodging, no champion. Actually, I, um, I'm on another stage. These guys can't beat me. I'm the best out there, pound for pound. I'm holding it down. This pretty boy Floyd, the one and only. The issue was that Floyd was considered a high risk, low reward type of challenge for the other champions. So he was forced to fill the void with lower opposition. And despite his dazzling talent, it almost seemed a bit too easy. I wonder if anybody in Herrera's corner will take notice of the fact that this is target practice for Floyd Mayweather Jr. And stop the fight. They, they, they were going to stop the fight, but the... ignoring. I said I, I still reign supreme. I mean, I still reign number one. And I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to unifying the titles at 130. Hopefully, I can fight the WBA champ from Mongolia. Then after that, talk with Bob, and hopefully, we can fight Robert Garcia to unify the titles. See, I'm only chasing champions. I'm no longer chasing challengers. Floyd Mayweather wanted to be the best, and he wanted to unify the titles. Negativity is what makes me get up every morning and work harder. Or if I get a book and I see a lot of negative stuff, that make me make that make me get up and run an extra mile or box an extra round. It's just it's gonna make me work hard. I'm gonna go out there and show the people that Floyd Mayweather is still the best. Pound for pound. The following fights would be without his father training him, as had been done in recent fights, and he assigned his uncle Roger as his head trainer. The father and son duo bumped heads over their preferred training styles. Me and my dad came to a, an agreement that uh, he was going to move on and train some other fighters and I said that uh, I was going to move on and work back with my uncle because I felt a lot more comfortable. I want to get it straight. People be telling him, oh, your daddy uh, too strict, your daddy too this, your daddy too that. Why do you think you got to be pound for pound? Best in the world. Somebody taught him how to do that and that somebody was me. Uh, beforehand, it was, it was just... Like I was in like a boot camp, now I feel a lot more comfortable because I get a chance to, even though I'm training, I get a chance to still live my life. When he off the ring, that's his business. When he come in here, then I'm controlling him. Floyd Sr. was the coach who favored defense, while his uncle Roger was the one who favored offense. It ain't about being aggressive right now. He got to fight a smart defensive fight. You don't win fights being defensive. You win. You win fight by punches landing. And it was Floyd's chance to show off his offense against Emmanuel Augustus, who was well known for his awkward fighting style. Floyd Mayweather Jr. showing off his fireworks here in the second round. What makes him a world-class fighter? Burton in the corner. Burton quickly escapes, but Mayweather connects. Despite Floyd's amazing attack. It seemed that Floyd was taking a few more punches than usual, with Augustus managing to draw blood from Floyd. You're right, Kevin. Floyd Mayweather definitely cut from his nose. Or the right hand. But he better be very careful because, like I said, what he Mayweather does from time to time, he leaves that chin here like he just did and just got counted. And he switches back now with conventional stance. Now, first one is a puncher. Because when you're throwing a punch, a man has to react to the punches you're throwing. And oh, this man is very fast. And trainer Nelson Lopez ends it. Throws in the towel. What are your plans as far as the future goes? How close? I'm getting ready to fight Diego Corrales, and um, you know next summer, and uh, 
you know, two young champions like me and Diego Corrales should come together and make an explosion, then hopefully I can unify the titles. Like I said before in the, in the meeting, I'm looking forward to fighting Joe Castamayor. I'm looking forward to fighting Diego Corrales. I want to fight the best they got out there. But, you know, I got to fight guys like this to make me prepare for guys like those. What would you have liked to see Floyd do? I think what the fans like about Lil Floyd is how he is now. It was an exciting fight, and that's what the fans and the people want. But the main thing is Floyd Mayweather still won the fight. They finally got a chance to see Pretty Boy bleed profusely from the nose. Tell me how the Kenny Levin fights he fought, from, uh, fought with his father. Where was any blood? Where was any not? Sometime soon he should be fighting for Oscar De La Hoya or Roy Jones money. Money is the byproduct of things that fighters can't control. Will Floyd have the patience to maximize his enormous talents? Well, he'll have to have the patience, Jim. This is not something that's going to just jump in his lap. He'll have to be there to prove himself over and over and over again before people will really take a liking to him so that he can have those type of days. Also, he has to have an opponent to make those type of dollars with. As you, you don't so have well a guy, know. That's right. You don't have a guy who, is, who the public can see as your equal, and you just about can forget it. In 2001, Floyd got the elite opponent he was looking for in the figure of undefeated Diego Corrales. Many believed that the height advantage and physical threat would pose a major problem for Floyd and this was exactly the type of fight needed if Floyd was to draw new fans. When I go into this fight, I know I'm going to be feeling good. I'm going to go out there and put on a superb show. And show him that, you know, flamboyant Floyd. And we know where I'm still flashing, I'm still doing my thing. my commands at all times. Shake hands, good luck. This is quicker and slicker against bigger and stronger. Mayweather has to try to discourage his relentless aggression in these early rounds. A half dozen pounds since weighing in. Big body in the head is a bigger target. Floyd planned on chopping down the tree, not with force, but with strategy. Floyd was intent on consistently throwing left-handed attacks but he would suddenly switch the angle of his left hand so that Diego was unsure where Floyd was aiming it. But he wants to engage May with big shot. Good little poke with the left by May. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep your hand up good. Seventh, eighth, ninth round, he's ready to go. All right, now they... Got like Mayweather, you get his confidence going. Mayweather was settling nicely into the fight whilst Diego was struggling to reach the target. Wait because he has to collect his breathing first. And that's what with an angry right hand of his own. As the middle rounds went by, there was a clear difference, and Floyd was beginning to put a beating on one of the division's best. Keep doing this. Ten rounds. We'll go, 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 we'll Floyd put Diego Corrales on the deck for the first time in his career. Well, there's a brilliant start to round seven. I'm just not sure how many of us expected it to be this dramatic and this graphic. It's not used to jail all night. And the second knockdown of the round for Mayweather. Three knockdown rule in the round. And there's the third knockdown of the round. It's his quickness level that puts him into a different dimension. Throw it. Another little left hook. Salma! On the two good shots. Right hand, another mark of what a performance it's been. Ray Woods is up on the apron. That's going to be the end of the fight. And Corrales goes over and nearly accosts his dad. Is holding Corrales to try to keep him away from his own corner man. Because this is pretty boy Floyd. I want to show the world that I'm the best out there, pound pound. I'm the best 130 pounder. So, you know, he said he's the best. I say I'm the best. So we come together and see who's the best. Are you determined to stay at 130 where there are other high-profile fighters? Well, you know, I want. I would like. I would like to fight Prince Nassim. Hopefully, we can meet at 128. Prince Nassim isn't going to fight you. Well, everybody want to see that fight. After he saw this, you know, really it ain't going to happen. You know, I really want to fight Prince Nassim, <laughs> but I know you don't, don't want to fight. But hopefully, I can fight the winner of Casemiro and Free Test. Despite his fantastic fighting. There was one slight issue that threatened to hinder his performances, brittle hands. After one of his fights, Mayweather revealed the shocking extent to which his hands were susceptible to injuries. 
I hurt my left hand, and later, later on in the fight, I hurt my right hand. So I just try to win the best way I know how. All I right. my legs, box, and move. He was tough, but I think if I had both of my hands, I could have, you know, eventually right, boxed down and got him out let, of here. And, and, and eventually you went down just, it seemed, to get a break. You see the, there's no bone right here, see? Right. Right over here, you can see there's no knuckle. There's no knuckle right here. Right, right here. There's no knuckle right here. And I got this, this thing, keep coming, a big knock coming right here on the, on the left. Does this mean basically you have to be a boxer and let the knockout just come when it comes? That's why in a lot of fights you see me boxing this move because my hands is hurting. But my hands never hurt me like they hurt me tonight. You got the win. Congratulations again, champ. I'm the best fighter in the world, pound for my hands down. I mean, against top eight competition, I dominated them, as you can see. When I fight Janelle Hernandez, stopped them. Angel Man Freddy stopped them. Justin Juco stopped them. Diego Corrales stopped him, Angel Man Freddie stopped him. So all these guys is um, top guys, and I stopped them in their tracks, blatant, dead in their tracks. Anything can happen in the sport of boxing, but right now I just don't think no guy can beat me. After failing to secure fights with the big names in the division, Floyd decided to move up in weight to contest for the WBC lightweight title against the Mexican Jose Luis Castillo. Castillo had been Julio Cesar Chavez's sparring partner for five years, and of course, Floyd had sparred with the guys who had both stunned Chavez in their fights, Pernell Whitaker and Frankie Randall, in an interesting mirror of a decade before. It would be the hyper-aggressive style of Mexico against the defensive style of the slick African Americans yet again. I got some good sparring partners, you know, water ways, middle ways, and this is what I need to get me ready for my big showdown. He ain't got no great skill. He's just tough. When I say tough, he's just tough. I mean, he can take an ass with him. Floyd Mayweather is accustomed to entering the ring second. Tonight, as the challenger for Castillo's title, he reverses that pattern and enters the ring first. There are only a few thousand people here to see a fighter regarded as one of the best in the world moving up in weight to fight the biggest, strongest fighter he's ever fought. He blames this on his promoter, Bob Arum. He's feuding with Arum again. He was a sparring partner for the great Chavez for five years. He knows his way around the ring. Others, the only question here tonight is whether that nine pound advantage that Castillo has will be meaningful. En route to the TKO victory. Floyd Mayweather Jr. is. In the early rounds, Mayweather started much quicker than Castillo did, scoring quick short combos and moving right out of the way. Against the ropes. And now pops a right hand upstairs as Mayweather is back. He says, look, look, if you throw a beer bottle into the ring, it's going to... Now the action begins to heat up just a little bit in round four. Well, it's getting sharper and sharper. As the middle rounds went by, Castillo was increasingly making the fight a rough affair, and Castillo now was starting to land hard punches. That's what Castillo should be doing, throw to the body. Like all of Mayweather's opponents, you have succeeded to the degree to which Castillo has succeeded so far. Doesn't necessarily mean he's winning the fight. Mayweather's Castillo's best moments were when he had Mayweather on the ropes. Back to our pre-fight feature, there's a hard straight right hand by Castillo against the ropes. There's those punches. It'll pass. Castillo banging to the body. Mayweather goes down as Castillo continues to turn this into a barroom brawl. And that's what you got to do if you want to beat Mayweather. Keep this thing at a brawl. So lands a straight left. With a hard right hand shot to the body. Floyd still throwing upstairs. Left. Mayweather shouldn't allow himself to be hit in the body. So what you're saying is that Mayweather has gotten into the kind of fight where Castillo's nine pound weight advantage. Right now, hold him. He'll change up now as Castillo begins to go upstairs. Oh. Hard right hand by Cast Castillo was growing more and more into the fight and it was now becoming a back and forth contest. Chavez, as Castillo's body shots slow Mayweather down. Make Castillo slow up a little bit. That Kulik removes a point. When I say break, you don't throw the last point. He's supposed to do it. Watch it. Hold it down now. Hold it down. Boom. What do you mean, calm it down? 
It's a fight. He could jump on him. That's smart. Three rounds of drama. Uh, right hand over the top by Castillo. Misses with the left uppercut. Goes to the body. Mayweather flicking in. Uh, he's bulking right into Mayweather's hook. Mayweather's got an excellent left hook. Just can't walk into it. You gotta bob and weave before you go there. Right into Mayweather's hook. Neutral His corner. right hand. Neutral corner. Watch that elbow. Let's go. Watch. So there goes the point deduction advantage as now Draculic evens it up by taking one from Mayweather. Close fight. In the championship rounds, Mayweather began to fight more flat footed and traded with Castillo. I think that first shot. He loves that. That's to his credit. He loves it. Mayweather does. Yeah, that's to his credit. He knows what he has to do, and he's trying to do it right here. Brilliant flurry. Castillo, this is instigated by Mayweather. Absolutely, and there's a brilliant left-right combination there. And another. And Floyd Mayweather suddenly giving as good as he's getting. Yes, and as Castillo leans on him and leans on him, you wonder if Floyd... Body shots by Castillo. Tough round to score. Flurry's by... Brother, who can box and move... Now he is standing and delivering and taking. Good body punches by Castillo. 27 and 0 coming into today, regarding himself as one of the very top pound for pound fighters in the world. Did he bite off more than he could do? Did he underestimate the difficulty of moving up in weight? Who will the judges choose in this rousing battle in Las Vegas? It was a 50 50 fight. But how did the judges see it? For the winner by unanimous decision and new lightweight champion of the world. Not the fight we saw. You know, and break him down. So I wasn't even worried at all. I was out boxing him easy. Well, you gotta realize I beat this guy with a messed up arm. My arm is messed up. But I, I don't have no excuse. I don't ever back down to turn off fights. But it, so it was a harder fight than you anticipated with what you came into the with ring one, with. With one arm, yes. One arm, yes. If you want to rematch, we can do it again. Just days before the fight with Castillo, Mayweather injured his shoulder in training, but he didn't want to risk losing the opportunity by cancelling the fight. Close to the back, when I hit the back, my arm, I was too close. Threw a punch like this and my arm bent back like this, which, uh, you know, tore the, uh, the, the, the rotator cuff. My arm was killing me. It was hurting so bad. It was like one of the worst feelings I ever had. I come to his house early Saturday morning, the day of the fight. And I come into his room, and all I could smell was a bunch of being gay. And I'm saying to myself, we're getting ready to fight a major fight. What the hell is going on? I didn't want to let nobody know. And, I'm, and I said, yo, I'm going to fight because this, this opportunity may never come again in life. Castillo had earned his rematch, which would take place at the end of 2002, and this time, Mayweather was fully healthy. Mayweather's reputation as an untouchable virtuoso was cracked, if not shattered, in the first fight. Can he mend those cracks tonight? Mayweather, for his part, claims that his performance in the first fight was adversely affected by a shoulder he injured in training and by two broken ribs. He says he's in 100% physical shape for this bout tonight. And Castillo catches him and pins him in the ropes toward the end of the round. Castillo had vowed to make a quicker start this time around, and his aim was to draw Mayweather into another brawl. And Mayweather's aim was to stay out of range from Castillo. But could he keep it up for the whole fight? So far, unable to cut off the ring against the niftier footwork of Floyd Mayweather Jr. Let's reel to the corner. You, you gotta throw combinations. Come on, you gotta paint him. We gotta work. I'm doing try trying. This has become a fight of one punch and get out of there for Mayweather. Later in the round, we see that Castillo lands one punch, and once again, Mayweather is out of there. Again, in the center of the ring, far from the ropes 
like this, Floyd Mayweather has big advantage. Well, he's the referee you've often called the best in the world. Good left hooks to the body. He said that hitting on that white belt for both fighters. For Mayweather, as Harold has tonight. And all three ringside judges gave the next call. Right here, left ear. And let me tell you, that could bring on some damage for Castillo if this fight... And at times, inevitably, Castillo tested Mayweather's chin and defense. Castillo had a chance to follow up with the right, didn't do it. Out shot. Castillo's got to keep that up. The crowd favorite is... Clean left hook by Mayweather. Castillo's left hand. It's Mayweather with momentum now. Castillo seems discouraged. Not going forward, not mounting an attack at this point. Mayweather holding on. Mayweather had put on a much improved display and it seemed that he had earned a victory that was much more clear this time around. I had seven to five for Mayweather. I'm wondering how far we might be off this time. And still, WBC lightweight champion of the world, pretty boy Floyd. You know, a tough opponent and um, that's what I was looking for, a tough fight, a good, exciting fight, and that's what he brought tonight. But like I said, I'm looking forward to the, to, to the bigger paydays, to the bigger fighters out there. Like I said before, I'm the black sheep of boxing. I'm fighting against the odds. But, you know, with, you know, with, with prayers and God behind me, can't nothing stop me. What odds are you talking about? I'm saying, you know, I feel like everybody is against Floyd Mayweather, but you got to get respect what respect is due. I'm one of the best out there, powerful power, and I prove myself over and over again. Floyd Mayweather's not ducking or dodging any opponent out there. I'm willing to fight whoever, whenever. Mayweather had overcome one of the biggest challenges of his career and was now a two-weight world champion. But could he fight the big names and earn the stardom he was desperately looking for? Floyd Mayweather was now on a mission and his goal was to attain stardom. I don't recall a fighter as talented as him who has made less of an impact. He was dominating everyone put in front of him, but he wanted the mega fights against big names and few fighters wanted to take the risk. Well, these guys, they say they want to fight, but then they don't never want to fight. They've been there for the longest. Yeah, well, that has to do Floyd Mayweather is willing to fight any fighter from 154 on down. You bring him and I'll take him. You can mark my word to that. And will that crowd appeal come for Floyd if he continues to win his fights? It's conceivable if he fights more big fights and fights this way. Uh, never going to reach the plateau of a Delahoya. That's a rare plateau. I want to fight the best they got out there. I would love to fight Constant Zoo or Toro Gotti, the best out there. And I hear that Shane Mosley is coming down to 147. I hear Oscar Delahoya is coming down to 147. For Floyd Mayweather is willing to go to 147 and fight Shane Mosley or fight Oscar Delahoya. And after Roy Jones Jr. was brutally dethroned by Antonio Tarver in 2004, it was Floyd who was now being upgraded from Prince to King of the Pound for Pound rankings. I feel, I feel so, but I think he has all the ammunition. I really do. I've never seen a guy like punch so far from Vic Roy Jones, but I honestly feel that he's the real deal. But still, he has not been able to turn that into box office appeal. He has never been able to capitalize on his magic in the ring. Floyd blamed his promoter Bob Arum of Top Rank for failing to take him to stardom, but Arum felt that Mayweather just needed more patience. He looks at an Oscar who may make $20 million for a fight uh, and says, why am I only making $3 million? Floyd has to realize his time will come. Why wouldn't you want to clean that up <laughs> Before you moved up in weight. Well, I actually fight these guys in the past. I've been trying to get uh, Lascano, Casamayor, Freitas in the past. These guys didn't want to fight me, so I'm going to move, move up to bigger and better things. I'm looking forward to fighting Arturo Gatti next. That's a big pay-per-view fight for me. Arturo Funda Gatti was a fan favorite and was most famous for being in wars, including his historic trilogy with Mickey Ward. It was Gatti who signed to give Mayweather his first pay-per-view appearance in 2005 
despite many feeling that Gatti was taking an unnecessary risk. Why risk all that by fighting Pretty Boy Floyd? Because it still makes dollars and cents. Gatti, being Gatti, wanted to test himself against one of the best. His handlers, being handlers, didn't want that fight. It was around this time when Floyd began to unleash his controversial persona, flamboyant Floyd, on the big stage. And he believed that this persona could entice casual fans to take more notice of him. When Floyd was an amateur, he talked about how he wanted to be the bad guy. I said, you could be Sugar Ray Leonard. He said, I don't want to be Sugar Ray Leonard. He said, I want to be the bad guy. People will pay to see the bad guy. At this point, it's no, it's no, longer, it's no longer pretty boy Floyd. I don't got a new name. We call it Flint Boy and Floyd Mayweather. You know, because we're going to bring, we're going to take this game to another level and take this, this old boxing game to another level. And, you know, my, my lifestyle is flashy. So, you know. Are you ready? Who ready? Because I'm ready. Ooh, I'm so good. I can fight. Today. Floyd knew that being boastful would entice new fans to take notice. I'm the best. Can nobody stop me? I'm the best fighter in the world. The best fighter ever put on a pair of gloves. I can even tell you who's rated number two behind me, pound for pound. Because when you're at the top, you ain't trying to look back. I like the rock diamonds. I like a lot of cars. Uh, I live in a big house. I got shoes for days. To me, it's probably a sad case. I mean, this is a guy who really could be the guy now. Good looking guy, articulate, all the skills, speed, the great story. But instead, it really turned people off. Well, he's the master of bling bling. He's got all the rings and all the jewelry and, and the nice cars, and I mean, that's his thing. Yeah, I got a lot of money. I got millions. I like to party, enjoy life. You know, I like the, the finer things. Like I'm flashy. I like expensive clothes. They see when I pull up, they see them Bentleys, they see them Ferraris, they see that ice. They know how I am. They don't like me, they know I'm cocky. But Floyd's lifestyle almost cost him the fight, as a legal issue threatened to delay the fight, and the risk was that Gatti would pull out and fight someone else instead. It's, it's so many club cases, it's crazy. He was accused in Grand Rapids of participating in a bar fight and kicking somebody in the head. I'm upset, mad as hell, because I pleaded a no contest to something I know I, I didn't do. That's his story, that the reason why he, he pled was because he wanted to fight. He knew if he tried to take it to trial and prove his innocence, uh, then you know he, that would jeopardize the fight because Gotti has a leverage because he knows he can sell 12,000 tickets. He really does not like Arturo Gotti, and he thinks Arturo Gotti put him through the ringer. I think he wants to make him pay because of that. Floyd was so eager, he agreed to fight in Gatti's hometown. He was a real fighter. He would have wanted this fight on mutual grounds. But I'm, I ain't the type to cry. I ain't the type to complain. It's not going to be a happy place for him. He's not going to Disneyland. You know, he's going to hell. It didn't bother Floyd, who felt that Gatti was not on his level and he wasn't afraid to let the world know. I'm going to expose him because this guy is getting free money. This guy's getting free money. He's fighting nobody. He's fighting bums. Floyd Mayweather has won his fights doing one thing, fighting the Mayweather style. Tucking the chin and hand speed. Good. Not knocking him for that. But what happens when he has to change and do something different? The mix ain't gonna help you. Your friends can't help you. His uncle can't help him. Can't nobody help him. Everywhere I go in this place, in this room, I can see Mayweather. Cause that's, I can't wait till the 25th. I would like to make this fight go 12 rounds and beat the living shit out of him. He deserves a good spanking. He's a little boy, he forgets about that. I just wanna punish him. I really wanna hurt him. I'm a true champion. I'm willing to go to his turf in Atlantic City. I'm going to step on him. I'm going to crush him. Y'all can mark my word to this. I'm going to crush him. He's a C-plus fighter. I'm an A-plus fighter. Come Saturday night next week, all the fans tune in because I'm going to dominate. The fans in Atlantic City can't get in there and fight for him. I'm going to dominate. I'm going to dog this fighter. Right down to Floyd's ring walk. Floyd turned his first pay-per-view experience into an entertaining spectacle. Floyd Mayweather, in a way, loves to be hated. With another one bites the dust, the worst music you could possibly find to antagonize him. Thirty-nine pounds. Professional record, a perfect one. Crazy. 
including 30 knockouts with six defeats and two world titles. It's great to want to be great. Floyd Mayweather believes he is. Gaddy wants to find out if he is. Floyd pounced on the opportunity instantly. To land something solid early to make the point to Floyd. And Floyd hits the two on the left on the break, and now there's a knockdown in round one. Who you see Floyd jump in with a hook? Uh, got it, got low, his head was on, got it, he hit him first ball while he was down, the referee comes like he's gonna come in, he's waiting for the referee to say something about him, hit him while he's down like that, and Floyd hits him with another hook. I can't blame Mayweather, he took advantage of the Yachty, to my view, Roy, hasn't landed a single body punch, that's a very bad sign. And that's what Buddy just told him, you're not going to the body, and that's because of his fans on him. Getting brutal in there, as Mayweather fires up with He see Floyd land a straight right hand, left jab, another straight right hand, another left jab, another straight right hand, just just did miss, giving Gotti fans a chance to see something what they came to see. Straight right hand by Mayweather, twists Gotti's head around. Ah! And at this rate, the question is, how long will Arturo be able to see Mayweather's punches? Too much hands, oh, by the shot. By the shot, hurt more than Arturo. Buddy McGirt keeps telling Gaddy not to worry. This is humiliating. Mayweather promised exactly this. He promised he would humiliate Arturo Gaddy before his fans. Very difficult to watch. After six rounds of torture, the fight was stopped. Virtuoso victory performance. Now here's the problem. Who in the world will fight him? I'm glad that he just gave me the opportunity. He was tough. You know, I, I boxed, stuck to the game plan, and got the victory. But he, he's still tough. He still can become world champion again. You said before the fight, he's a paper champion. Why do you want that paper championship? I, I never said it. Man, that's all, that's all about Tyler Taker. We just talk. That's what fighters do. Arturo Gotti is, is Thunder Gotti. This is his hometown. I just appreciate the fans in Atlantic City for letting me come here and fight. So you're going to raise that paper championship high? Extremely high. I'm, I'm just looking forward to giving fans more fights like this on pay-per-view. Thank you. How can you keep him off the top of the pound for pound list? And who's going to fight him? There's no way to really keep him off the top of that list. I mean, he truly is the best fighter out there right now. There are people that always want to fight the best because you got to beat the best in order to beat the best. So if guys want to be the best, they got to see Floyd. Floyd was now at the top of the game, and perhaps better for him, he was now fighting in a new era of top fighters who would want to fight him so they could get to the top. There were fighters like Miguel Cotto on the rise, Ricky Hatton who beat Cost Jazoo, but it was Zab Judah who got the call up. So the two would fight for the IBF welterweight championship in 2006. But because Zab had just lost his WBC welterweight title in a close split decision against Carlos Baldemir, there were some who weren't happy with the matchup. I'm the best out there in the boxing game and you know it. And now if it's I tell you what, Floyd, and, you're and, not the champ at 140. I know that. I don't uh, have to be a professional fighter go, to know that. You're not. And if you win this fight, you're uh, not the champ at 147. He just lost in the ring to Carlos Baldemir. The guy couldn't afford the sanctioning fees for all three belts. How could you possibly think that? We tried to get the fight with Baldemir, and he bit himself out. You know I would have loved that fight. You know what? You don't know I know who Brian the champ Kennedy. is. Hey, you who beat Costa Zoo? Who beat Costa Zoo? Let me ask you Kennedy. the question. You, hey, would you, fight, would you fight Ricky Hatton in Vegas if the split wasn't in your favor? I would fight Ricky Hatton anywhere. I'll fight Ricky Hatton in your backyard. But even if the, the split, truth. but if the split wasn't in your favor, would you say, "All right, he priced himself out," or would you it's take always, it to say, "I got to fight"? Everything is always in my Walter favor. Tyler. Give me my props where the props is deserved. Give me the number one guy. If number one guy don't want to well, fight, I go to number what, two. What, what, don't Rick, fight. what about Ricky we Hatton? We had to fight Baltimore. What about Ricky Hatton? The I champion asked to come over to Ricky. I asked to go over to England and fight Ricky Hatton. His dad said his son is not ready for me yet. Well, I never, I never ducked the dodge no opponents. Whoever they put in front of me, I have beat. Because like I said before, this is the biggest fight of my career. This is a stepping stone. 
trying to go to the, uh, to the next level. For one of the so-called best, oh, he is, well, bring, him, bring him to me, and I can prove you wrong. Press conference. Mayweather has a, a, a ton of respect for me, you know what I'm saying? Usually, Mayweather gets some press conferences, and he, and he puts his hand in God's face, he talks junk to them, he calls one kind of names, but today, we didn't see that, Mayweather. My hands are, my hands are just as fast as Mayweather's, you know what I'm saying? And I hit twice as hard as him. But the question is, how is Mayweather going to be able to hold me back? I'm fighting to win the, I'm fighting to become four-time world champion in four different weight class, and I'm also fighting to keep my pound-for-pound pound ranking. But uh, but I'm going to take an un unbelievable effort by Zap Jr. to get him. Keep your punches up. The first few rounds saw a display of strategic genius between the two, with Zab slightly edging Mayweather out. Tangling up here. Well, you can get a knee tweaked on something like that. Stop it. If you believe that claim, that's up to you that the Judas haven't been anywhere this week. Get that up to six to one. So probably the majority of the people in this house have a couple dollars on Mayweather. Left hand from Judah. Nice counter left by Judah. He does open up. Mayweather will be there to counter. Nice left Big hand. Big left hand. Probably the best shot Mayweather's taken in quite some time. From round five onwards, the tide turned and Mayweather was firmly in control of the fight. For the first time in the Another fight. right hand and a left hook. Judah's getting hit here. Listen, keep walking to the muscle like I told you. Don't stop walking. You had his ass then. Some fight, fights were, were zapped. Ten, Judah caught Mayweather on the end of that right hand. No effect. First three or four rounds of this fight. He's getting one upside the head. Now he sticks out his tongue. Right hand. He might want to consider getting out. I really do. But when they worked on him in the corner. In a moment of frustration, Zab Judah fought dirty and all hell broke loose in the ring. That was coming. The, gra the great equalizer, Alan. The great equalizer. That was an extremely low shot. Eight on his left leg. Roger Mayweather and Yoel Judah in the ring. A fight breaking out between the trainers. This is a horrible sight, Alan. The madness led to his angry uncle, Roger, being removed from the ring, and Floyd would be without his trainer for the remainder of the fight. I'm going under the table. We've got beer being thrown around the arena. It's complete mayhem in there. Floyd himself had kept his cool, and after the mayhem subsided, the bout continued just where it left off. A couple times. Yeah. I would have stopped him. Yeah, listen. Just looking for a way out, but don't worry about that. Go back to doing what you're doing. I saw two or three, I saw two or three different shooters in the ring today. Good point. And I think there are Just two. for the story, Floyd did a good job here. Excellent performance by Floyd Mayweather. Virtuoso. Soon after winning his fourth divisional title, his career would be changed forever. After years of being frustrated with his promoter Bob Arum, Mayweather decided to leave top rank so that he could form his own promotional company and be his own boss. What happened with me, I could have fought here with you a long time ago, but I had a promoter that didn't believe in me, they had me playing a background. And their whole focus was Oscar De La Hoya. He was the cash cow. You know, I never cried and complained. What I did is said, now I continue to beat these fighters. Eventually, the world will see, and eventually I'll be a household name. And I said, you know what? We need to, you know, I need to be promoted in different areas. He will only promote you in the Hispanic communities. And I said, me, myself, I want to be promoted everywhere. Not too familiar with the African-American market, which Floyd wanted to be in the African-American market, promoting to an Hispanic market with him. Oscar was the pay-per-view star. But that never happened, so one day I went to him, I went and got a cashier's check from one of my accounts. I think it was like 750000 So it took, it took time, but then uh, once I got away from the promoter, once I got away from Top Rank, um, a company that I'm, I'm, that was the best thing in my career to get away from Top Rank. When I got free and became my own boss, I've done things my way. We formed Mayweather Promotions and that was the best move he could have ever made.
In his next fight, Floyd decided to take on Carlos Baldemir, who had beaten Zab Judah and previously destroyed Arturo Gatti. Baldemir had been unbeaten for eight years, and if Floyd could beat him, he would become the unified world champion, silencing the critics who felt that Floyd had to beat the guy who many considered to be the legitimate champion if he wanted recognition as a four-weight world champion. And the fight would be without his uncle Roger Mayweather, as Roger was serving a short-term prison sentence. Get off the ropes, keep fighting, and keep checking them. That's all you have to do. Baldemir was no match for Floyd's skills, and Mayweather put on a perfect purist performance. But after hurting his hand in the fight, Floyd failed to deliver the action that critics were looking for. Because of Mayweather's big right hand. I don't see anybody roaring, but where's the drama? And Mayweather Greenback. A mixed response from the crowd after a whitewash domination of Baldemir by Mayweather. He threw it, I hurt my, uh, my right hand, um, you know, probably in the sixth round. I put through it, you know, my team rooted me on, my fans rooted me on, and I just went out there and put on a, actually a boxing clinic. The booing, there were people leaving after the 10th and 11th round. I want your response. Well, you know, you never give me the credit I really deserve. I mean, you're, you're good at commentating, so stick to commentating. It's, it's more like this. Don't, don't always be a critic and be so negative. Let's be positive. I'm the best. I'll be fighters under any circumstances. I can pull it through it. Do Larry you? Merchant is just a commentator. He don't know nothing about boxing. Do you, want, do you still, are you looking forward to fighting Oscar De La Hoya? Do you think this fight will get him into the ring with you? Well, uh, well absolutely. Uh, Oscar, Oscar De La Hoya said that he wants the best, he want to leave off fighting the best. Bring it on, I'll tax that ass too. Thank you very much. Heading into 2007, Mayweather was on the cusp of securing a mega fight, and the dance partner he wanted to tango with was the living legend Oscar De La Hoya. He's won a lot of, um, a lot of champion. He won a lot of championships. I won a lot of championships. Um, so if he want to go out on top, you know, this is a fight that I, I, I truly believe should happen. The reigning, defending, two-time super welterweight champion of the world, the Golden Boy, Oscar. De La Hoya had been the most popular fighter of the last decade. He was boxing's first six-weight world champion, having won titles from lightweight to middleweight 10 times. With a record of 38 and four, he had taken on every top fighter in his generation. He had fought Julio Cesar Chavez, Pernell Whitaker, Shane Mosley, Bernard Hopkins, Felix Trinidad, and the list went on. So much for the notion that De La Hoya didn't have the power to knock my organ down. But beating Mayweather would be the biggest triumph of his illustrious career, and Mayweather on the other hand was chasing his fifth divisional title nine years after winning his first one. And interestingly, Mayweather Sr. had been training Oscar for the last six years and had struck a magical partnership that rejuvenated the career of the Golden Boy. Look man, you can knock this son of a bitch out right now! My best trainer I've ever had was Floyd Sr. I was my old self, you know, when, when the first bell rang, it's like the instincts kick in. He inspired me, he, uh, he gave me motivation. He would yell at me, I mean, but that's what I needed. I mean, I was already established. The trainer that he is, what he's teaching me, um, no other trainer can do it. I mean, my physical is, is much stronger. Um, I can last more rounds. I, I will not, I guarantee you, I will not fade away in the last round because of my physical conditioning that Mayweather has given me. And it seemed as if we may see father versus son. Now, if your dad is training Oscar and you challenge Oscar, Hey, he threw a challenge out there at me too. But with Mayweather Sr. requesting two million for the fight and Oscar questioning his killer instinct, Oscar opted against hiring Floyd Sr. Oscar decided to hire Freddie Roach instead, who was a more offensive-minded coach. It's his son who I'm fighting and if he was training me, I wouldn't have that, that same passion uh, 
um, you know, from him. We know this guy is his main asset is speed, but we gotta kind of set traps to this guy. Your boxing ability, he's never seen no one like you before. He hasn't faced an opponent like you ever in his life. Right. Oscar felt that he could defeat Floyd with the skills that Floyd's father had taught him, but Floyd was not bothered with what Oscar may have learnt from his father. <laughs> and he was so crazy about my daddy, and my daddy taught him so much. Why he gets so cheap when it comes become when it when it came to his biggest fight? If, if my dad was in this corner, my dad couldn't tell him how to beat me because my dad never seen me take an L before. So how can you tell somebody how to beat somebody who haven't took a loss before? Another interesting storyline between the fighters was that De La Hoya had been the focus of Bob Arum whilst the two were fighting for top rank and he was the reason why Floyd never got the attention he wanted at the company. But this would be the first mega fight in which both fighters were their own bosses as Oscar was now promoting himself too under the banner of Golden Boy Promotions. However, Mayweather allowed De La Hoya to call all the shots knowing that this fight would be the biggest of his career. I mean, to, to get this guy to sign a contract, we have, we have to go through hell. Of course, anything just to get this guy to sign the contract and make the fight happen, let's do it, and we've done it. Well, I agreed to everything Oscar De La Hoya wanted. Mm -hmm. Everything. Because he's the A-side, and I had to respect it. He chose the weight. Mm -hmm. He chose the gloves, he chose the arena, basically he chose everything. He chose the judges, he chose the referee, and my job was to show up, do what I have to do, so I can become the A-side and call those same shots that Oscar De La Hoya called when we faced each other. And after the fight was officially announced, one of the best promotional tours in boxing history had begun and Mayweather was relentless with his trash talking, looking to frustrate De La Hoya on the big stage. We got, we got, we got champions galore here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, he's, I think Oscar's a hell of a fighter. He knows he's a good fighter. And he's been in there with a, a lot of, a lot of a hell of a fighters, but I mean, he's never been in there with a guy like a pretty boy Floyd. You know, I'm the top dog, I'm the honcho. 37 have failed. And then you can mark my word to this. And if he, if he believe in himself, like I believe in myself, I bet all my money that I got in my bank account and on this fight that he won't win. I'll tell you one thing. Your response? I, I mean, the reason why I'm letting them talk is because the motivation is just... <sighs> yeah, you... Yeah, wait, wait, hold on, wait, wait. I, th I, I think I stained your shoes. Uh, motivation is oozing out of it. <laughs> it don't matter. It don't matter. You, you, it's on. you know, that's what I make them do. I make them, I'm going to bust that ass. You know it. You know, you know what it is. I don't say nothing. You put him in front of me and I'll beat him. I'm the top dog in the sport. That's why I'm facing I lay back in the cut be easy. Once, once I got his name on that contract, that's all I had. Then I can get loose. Like I really want to get loose. Hi, my name Oscar De La Hoya. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna. You ain't gonna do shit. Believe me, come May 5th, you ain't gonna do shit. I'll give you something to cry about. You ain't gonna do nothing. Sit down. Sit. Sit down. Oscar, sign it. Come on, Oscar. Let me let him sign it. Let me let him sign it for you. Mm. I'm gonna make it a rough and tough fight come May 5th. I'm so scared. Can we get a stare down, please? You ain't tough. You ain't tough. Stop it. You ain't tough. You don't scare me, man. I'm a beast, man. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the top dog in this It looked like you were trying to make him a little uncomfortable, though. You're getting right up in his face. How much of this is selling, and how much is it? No, I'm going to make this guy uncomfortable. I'm going to make uh, both. Both. We got to sell this fight, and I'm going to make this guy uncomfortable. May 5th, buy the fight, pay per view. Pretty Boy Floyd versus the Golden Boy Oscar De La Hoy. The world awaits. I mean, it's, it's going to be a pay-per-view extravaganza, so buy the fight. This fight marked a major turning point in the marketing of fights. HBO televised a new reality TV show called 24-7 that detailed the training camps and personalities of each fighter. And perhaps unsurprisingly, due to Mayweather's desire for fame, the idea had come from Mayweather's team. There you go. There you go. The show allowed Mayweather to take his trash talking antics to new heights. He's the villain in rap music. I'm the villain in boxing. I tell him like this. 
I'm at the top. When, I, when I'm at the top, I ain't trying to look at who's behind me. I'm leading the way. You talking about 24-7? He born. Extremely born. Who the, who the f want to hear about some cappuccino? Who the f want to hear about some fucking dogs? They want to see controversy. This is America. It's my job. There's no pressure on me. I know what I got to go out there and do. I know what, I know what it takes. I'm not even worried. I'm getting that cash. I'm whooping that. And that boy, he living that flash. And it was in this show that Mayweather iconically revealed his new brand, Money Mayweather. It was perfect. Mayweather knew that every culture in the world could relate to money, whether they would love him or hate him for it. His antics would entice casual fans into watching the fight, even if it was just to see him lose. It's Floyd, my name is Floyd, my name is Floyd, my name is Money Mayweather. America is built on two things. Controversy and money. It's not a black thing, it's not a white thing, it's a green thing. 450, like 64,000. <laughs> Every punch I throw, I'm gonna beat you. Every round I go, you will never be able to beat me. Just thinking about Mayweather. It's a good guy, bad guy fight, you know? And we know who the bad guy is, and we know who the good guy is. Floyd has no problem with accepting and embracing the villain role. Because at the end of the day, but he's also the banker. Right now, people that's at home say, I'm going to pay to see that kid get his kid. Say what you want to say about me. He know he's going to get beat. It's how he's going to get beat. That's what he better worry about. You want to talk your trash? We'll see. watch the show I mean has he gotten under your skin at all at this point oh absolutely I mean it's all about you know making sure your opponent gets under your skin as long as he doesn't get inside your head that's uh, you know fine and dandy with me made me train hard and that's what that's what we uh, we wanted come May 5th it's gonna be me and him up in that ring and uh, you know we'll have to deal with it so whatever I bring to the table I have to deal with and whatever he brings to the table uh, I'll have to deal with so it's gonna be uh, pretty interesting to watch and, and May 5th, you're gonna see the same Floyd Mayweather. I mean, in tremendous shape, 150, 151, looking good, feeling good. And my team is ready to go, and I'm pretty sure Oscar's team is ready to go. The promotion of this fight contributed to what would become the richest fight in boxing history, breaking Livegate records and pay-per-view numbers. The fight generated 18 million at the gate, breaking the record set by Lennox Lewis and Evander Holyfield and 2.4 million homes purchased the fight on pay-per-view, beating the former record held by Mike Tyson and Lennox Lewis. So after years of climbing the mountain, Mayweather's chance for global respect had come. But how would he perform on the big stage? But De La Hoya has been a welterweight or junior middleweight, even fought at middleweight for 10 years. Mayweather has just fought one legitimate strong welterweight in his last fight. That he has donned a Mexican sombrero and will apparently walk to the ring. Well, when Uncle Roger used to do it, it was certainly to taunt the crowd, a role which Floyd has cultivated for himself. In another era in the sport, this fight would have taken place in an outdoor stadium with a crowd of 90,000 people. It is a mark of boxing's current economic scene. For the WBC Super Welterweight Championship of the World. A perfect professional record consisting of 37 fights. Pretty boy, Floyd Mayweather. The reigning, defending, Super Welterweight Champion of the World. Mayweather lusts after Delahoya's stardom. Delahoya lusts after Mayweather's status. Will we get spontaneous combustion? As expected, with Oscar being the bigger guy, Oscar started the fight as the aggressor, trying to muscle Floyd into corners so he could unleash barrages of body punches. He landed a right cross lead, moved away. Right hand across the top for Delahoya excites the crowd, and immediately Delahoya begins. I've always said Oscar's key was his jab, and he's not using his jab at all. 
Just trying to walk in and shoot. Across the top against Floyd Mayweather. There's another straight right hand landing for De And a jab and a right hand again. And the crowd... With Oscar's aggression, Floyd had to bring out all of his defensive wizardry to make punches miss. And he would slip in single shots when he saw critical windows of opportunity. They landed enough to make the point that he's landing punches while Floyd is well, throwing. He's, 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 he's numbers with slightly favorites with his right arm. I'll, I'll, now I'll. the left hook lands upstairs. The fight was fairly competitive after the first three rounds. Stop thinking too much, when he thinks too much, he's playing right into Mayweather's hand. When he lets the punches go, he does very well. Hoping that the weight size and the strength will wear him down as the fight goes on. And again, here at the beginning of round four, we see Mayweather landing the cleaner shots. And that has helped the power. There are the body shots. There is a sustained attack to the body like nothing you've seen in Delahoya's career. Straight right hand lead for Mayweather. Tremendously effective with that punch. Oscar was pressing the action, but it was Floyd who was landing punches with more accuracy. He's giving him tired and throwing a lot of punches, but I don't think he's been effective. But right now, the fight is happening, and, and there, it's a very close fight. We don't really know yet. He uses that punch increasingly down the stretch of those fights in which he's comfortable and confident. Delaware. And he lands a right cross across the top and puts Delaware on the defensive as soon as they're in the middle of the ring. And Mayweather is trying to knock Oscar out with a right hand. At the halfway point, the action grew as Floyd decided to take a risk and fight at close range. As Vernon Forrest did to Shane Mosley, that's not working as well. So once again, Deloy is short with the right hand, but gets in a left. And again, they're near the ropes. And again, Deloy gets to make the last little statement of good round, round six. Good, good round pass. Good body shot by Mayweather. And he comes and he punches around. He fights in staccato bursts. He likes it that way. Deloy is trying to pressure, pressure, pressure. Well, Once again, Oscar being more active, setting up the assault with the jab. Oh yeah, stopped using the jab, and Floyd is picking his shots again. No, but but he, but, but uh, no, oh, yeah, is picking them off. Right there. That. You're looking for one definitive rally down the stretch of the round. Heading into the last few rounds, Oscar began to fade, and Mayweather began to take control. Mayweather beginning to operate like a surgeon. Ten rounds finished, two rounds to go. Argus, who was tiring that night. But that didn't mean that Oscar had given up. Oh, right hand by Deloya. His most effective punch in three rounds. Crowd tries to root Oscar into position. To... And the younger man appears to be winning the argument. And right up until the end, both fighters gave it their all. that... Cinco de Maya is becoming Mayweather. Fighting even after this. And where does Mayweather go from this pinnacle? And they fight to the finish and please the crowd. To the crowd. A better fight than a lot of people anticipated. Lloyd Mayweather Sr. can be proud of his son and of the fighter he's trained for the last seven years. The fight was competitive but most spectators agreed on the winner. Winner by split decision and new WBC Super Welterweight Champion of the World. It was a hell of a fight. That's what the fans wanted. I told the fans they was gonna get a good fight, so we gave them a good fight tonight. That's what you call a masterpiece. You know, he one of the best fighters in our era, and I showed you what I could do to one of the best fighters in our era. I'm still retiring after this fight. I proved myself in the sport. Uh, Six-time world champion, five different weight classes. Came into the fight today wearing 148. They said I couldn't do it. And you, you seen him walk away beat a junior middleweight today. After 11 years of fighting, he had his first mega fight win. And he was now ready to walk away from the sport. Or so he claimed. After his victory over Oscar De La Hoya, Mayweather finally attained the fame he was looking for, scoring multiple televised appearances and becoming a household name. I'm Floyd Mayweather and I'm the number one pound for pound best fighter in the world. He threatened to retire, but now he was able to command major paydays if he continued to fight.
and he soon agreed to fight again, even going into training whilst being on the TV show Dancing with the Stars. I can fight a championship fight and I can dance with the stars. This is something that's never been done before in history. Floyd Mayweather and Karina Boom Boom Smirnoff. Floyd was wiggling his way into new audiences, literally, and was doing the promotional work to grow his name that his former bosses failed to do. Back to the business of fighting, Mayweather decided to fight Englishman Ricky Hatton. I think you saw more action in these four rounds than you've shown the value for money in Floyd's whole career. I'll just leave it at that. When, when Hatton made the comment that he made on HBO, Floyd looked to me and said, make the fucking fight happen. Floyd's goal was now to cash in on another mega fight, which was a more attractive option than fighting the smaller name champions. With the support that Ricky received from his hometown of England, this promised to be another pay-per-view extravaganza. And once again, Floyd brought out his controversial side in the build-up, showing an intriguing clash between their personalities. 300,000 on the pinky, 600,000 on the neck. Look at me tailor-made suit, $3,000, who gives a shit? He's a good fighter, everybody knows he's a good fighter, but he doesn't have to keep telling us. I beat him, I beat him, I beat him. We know Floyd, change the record. You talk, I said what I had to say. Let me see how you gonna shoot to my body. Oh, oh, oh. Now he wanna get behind camera and talk trash. Man, these boys are easy work, these boys can't beat me. He gives more chance. Probably half the British fans probably feel like they know me, and half, half of them probably do. So Mayweather, goodbye. Nice knowing you, but it's all over now. Hatton's gonna yeah. kick your butt. If he beats me, he'll have earned it. But he won't. Put your head in, guys. Put him well out. Well, he thinks he just has to turn up to win. Big reality shot. I'm able to counter punch on the move. That's when you get a complete fighter, and that's what I am. I'm a complete fighter. He go bring his A game and get his what what? No, man. This 24 7, you can tell him shit. Fun. He gonna get that ass checked, baby. <laughs> Your mom can write a check. No way. Can't catch. We know he come one way. We know he come straight ahead throwing a hook. That's it. I've got everything to beat Floyd Mayweather, and he's got everything to lead me a merry dance at times. Will he stop me coming? I don't think he will. The fight itself was just as entertaining as the build-up. Floyd surprisingly fought in close range with the British brawler, which many didn't expect, and eventually he knocked Hatton out in 10 rounds. Left hook drops him, his legs are still left there, Floyd knows it. This is the beginning of the end. Well, you won't let him off. Down he goes, all over! Floyd Mayweather puts the stamp on his greatness. What is your feeling right now about the future? You know, now I need a vacation. I'm not trying to call out no waterways. I've done what I had to do in the sport. I accomplished what I had to accomplish. Now it's time for me to become a promoter. Soon after the fight, Mayweather vacated his belts to take a long break whilst he considered retirement. But that didn't stop him from building on the fame of his global brand. Boy, you want publicity? Come take on the big show. I accept! Money man around it. Whoa, 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 there you go. And Mayweather wins the match. Literally the biggest victory of his career. And in his absence, new contenders fought for the space left on the throne. But it was Filipino Manny Pacquiao a rising great who was storming through boxing's weight divisions who occupied the seat. Where does the spotlight fall? Right here. This is finishers in the sport. And he too gained global respect when he brutally retired Oscar De La Hoya after eight rounds. And on the day of Pacquiao's next big fight against Ricky Hatton, Mayweather announced that after a year and a half of retirement, he was coming back for his old crown. You know, I'm, I'm the king. I left on top, came back on top. You know, I'm here to fight and reclaim what's mine. Well, tonight, any man can win. It's a gamble, once again. 
But when you bet on Floyd Mayweather, that's for sure money. So when you ask me, I tell you, put your money under your mattress and keep it till July 18th. <laughs> Pacquiao knocked Hatton out in two rounds. Oh, oh my gosh, what a straight knockdown. No way, that is that. What an amazing knockout shot. That is the most spectacular shot of Manny Pacquiao's incredible career. Immediately, it had the world wondering what would happen if these two mega forces were to meet in the ring?